welcome to New Game Plus. I'm Tim. This week I'm not joined by Donald, I'm joined by Jordan. How are you? I'm great, doing great, Tim. I think we've got a lot of great uh, coverage to look at this episode. Yeah, we certainly do. I have a look at Witcher 3 Heart of Stone later on in the episode. The expansion to the probably game of the year, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The, is that the one with the card game? Do you yeah, look at the it card certainly game? is, yes. Uh, did you get the cards? Yes, I got the cards. And they uh, were a lot of fun. But you have a look at Battlefront as well. That's right. I joined Jamie. We have an in-depth review of Battlefront coming up through this episode, which should yeah. be pretty interesting. I think a lot of people are excited about that one. Yeah, certainly because of the movie as well, because that's coming out mid-December. Yeah, and that's all the rage at the moment. It's yeah. hard to look at the internet without seeing something about Star Wars coming yeah. up. So, uh, Speaking of, like, there's a Chrome extension at the moment where you can aggressively block any mention of the new Star Wars. Oh, okay. So if you want to avoid spoilers, that's the best way to go. I haven't even look looked at any of the trailers yet so that's probably for me but I think on top of that we've also got a bit of coverage at PAX. Yes we have a look at Just Cause 3 with an interview and that's something that I'm certainly looking forward to uh, going off the coast of like fake Costa Rica to see an oil platform that isn't quite Metal Gear Solid 5 Act 3 but yeah I'm still very excited for the game. Oh, that's a lot of cool stuff let's get into it. Yep. Now, Witcher 3 was probably one of my Game of the Years, mm. and now we have an expansion for it, yep. uh, Witcher 3 Hearts of Stone, and I'm very excited to play this. What about you? I'm pretty excited. I haven't actually got it myself, but I want you to sell it to me. Yes. Now, uh, the way I see this is it is one of the uh, must-buy DLCs. Think of, like, Fallout 3. There was some must-buy DLCs in that. This is a standalone story that is has all the uh, turns and tricks of the full story, but it's just a little shorter. And it has everything in it, lots of new stuff, lots of new gear, and some very interesting characters, all very Witcher 3, and I absolutely love it. Now, you haven't played this, mm. but uh, the way I can encourage you to get it is... It is both cheap, and the physical version comes with two decks of Gwent. So you can play oh, yeah. real-life Gwent, uh, as well as having a whole lot of extra things to do in the game. Oh, like, coming from someone who's actually played 1 and 2, especially 1, this actually, like, they bring back a character from 1 who I really enjoyed, disappeared in 2, but it's back now in 3, and I'm, I'm kind of excited, and does she kind of really control the story a little bit? Uh, she is certainly a big part of the story uh, and bringing in these characters from the older games. I didn't play a lot of one, so I didn't recognize them straight away, mm. but they are very deep characters mm -hmm. and it's not always that you meet these characters at the beginning and you don't know anything about the characters. You take them on face value and they are so deep that you can change your mind on them multiple times of who this person is and whether you want to side with them or not. Uh, and again, Witcher 3 game, so lots of choices, mm -hmm. lots of different uh, things that affect the story and the outcome. So there's multiple endings as well. But it's not crappy multiple endings. It's, it, you really have a feel for the things that you are doing in the story are making an impact, which is what makes Witcher games good as well. Yeah, especially, like, I guess, the main quest of Witcher 3, which was the beginning, I guess, first main one yeah if you know you don't save those kids yes yes uh that probably made a few uh, a few people very sad uh i certainly replay both to get both <laughs> both outcomes of that story and uh sometimes you just can't have like a good ending someone has to die <laughs> and that's the thing with witch games but i certainly love this story uh, it's great addition, certainly mm -hmm. a must buy, and it adds a whole lot more to the game, as well as new gear, uh, and then you, you can get into the new game plus mode, which was added as a free DLC earlier, but certainly Witcher 3 Hearts of Stone, a must buy. <laughs> so Matt, you know what the cool thing is I love about indie games? People just make, deciding that, you know what? I want to make a game that is effectively an ode to 90s Japanese adventure games and I want to make it a cyberpunk thing. So, Snatcher? Well, sure, but I'm, we're really talking about Read Only Memories by Midboss. Okay. So, Read Only Memories, you play as a, as, a, as a struggling journalist who comes across a mysterious sapient robot and your task to find its creator 
And as you go along, you will learn that, hey, there's actually some really mysterious things going on. Corporate espionage and all that fun stuff. It's so, the robot isn't Metal Gear Mark 2. It's got nothing to do uh, with Snatcher. Right, right, I'm just getting that out of the way. I, hey, look, right. I like Snatcher too, but trust me. Okay. I mean, I love this idea of it. Because there's nothing like this on the market. It is a, it is a 90... It is that, this style, the aesthetic, it's like there is nothing mm. like this out there. Like, that's super refreshing it's, and super cool. It's a fantastic throwback as, as aesthetic-wise to stuff like PC Engine games right. along with MSX. And I think it's a fantastic... Um, it captures the pixel art quite well that mm. not a lot of games do. A lot of games phone it in and then put in parallax scrolling in Nintendo, uh, like Nintendo 8-bit style games. But this is, is fairly faithful. And not to mention the fact that it handles diversity in a really interesting way where right at the start of the game you're given a choice of pronouns, mm -hmm. which not a big deal for myself but for a lot of people out there it's super cool I'm happy to say yeah I like the way that it doesn't throw it in your face right. either I know there are pronouns but at the, at the same time it handles it with uh, it handles the subject matter fairly fairly dignified that not a lot of games mm. do a lot of games like to just throw it around a lot and this one not so much right. which I really appreciate it's a shame that the story just goes for it's a little too verbose when I like. I think yeah, you yeah. feel the same as well. I, so. I must admit it is quite verbose, especially a lot of the conversations. Like, there's some fairly urgent matters investigating certain areas that you shouldn't be in. Right. And you're sitting there for 20, 30 minutes. Imagine robbing a house and sitting there oh, talking about exactly. how awesome the drapes are for 30 minutes and then getting caught by oh, police. But <laughs> with that aside, yes. honestly, it's worth checking out. It's mm -hmm. not terribly long either. So if you've got a bit of time and you want to try something new and interesting, read only memories. It's out now on Steam. I've got to agree with that. Now, with Sony's booth, there isn't much more of an emphasis on indie games compared to the Microsoft booth. However, there is plenty more emphasis on a lot more HD releases. So, games that we've played many, many years, moves, moons ago from PlayStation 3, we're revisiting them in glorious 1080p, as well as a very, very, uh, very consistent frame rates. Uh, that in particular, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection, which features the first three Uncharted games, one to three, um, is still fantastic looking on a HD screen, but most importantly, Importantly, Journey HD looks absolutely stunning in a consistent frame rate along with some such high definition textures as well as just, my goodness, you guys, yeah, it's, you have to see it to believe it, it looks absolutely stunning, plays just as well as you'd expect as well, there's not really much changes on that front, but there are some other games as well such as uh, Drive Club Bikes, a few things in particular including PlayStation VR and a lot more previews at Uncharted 4 Behind Closed Doors. VR works just as well as it did back at Tokyo Game Show 2015. Unfortunately, not as much of a selection compared to some of the games being developed in Japan, but still looks great, can't wait for it. Can't wait to see what Sony provides and offers for us in 2016. Now, one of the big announcements to come out of E3 uh, this year was Microsoft doing backwards compatibility for Xbox 360 games on Xbox One, which in itself is an engineering marvel without going into the technical details of it. Yeah, it, it is. Because it fully emulates the Xbox 360 games. And AAA titles, which should be really demanding, uh, run perfectly, so which is great. So, the big ones off the top of my head, Fallout 3, Gears 2, Mass Effect... Uh, Stick of Truth, Mirror's Edge. Yep. There's plenty of decent, decent games that, that were in it in their day, particularly like you know taxing on the systems. But it also extends to the Xbox Live Arcade titles, which I think is fantastic as well. Yeah, Shadow Complex, Beyond Good and Evil HD, some really good Xbox Live games. Yeah, yeah. And so basically, what we want to do was go down how this works for like how it works on your system because the Xbox One interface is obviously very different to the Xbox 360 interface. Yep. So we figured we, we've tried it in a few different ways and we figured we'd just go through those quickly. Okay, well there's two ways. There's if you have a, an original disc yep. and if you have a digital mm. download, a purchase online or if you have an, a Games for Gold yep. copy. Yep. Um, now with the disc, you put the disc in and yep. it tells you you need an update before you can run it. Yes. And that update appears to be basically the it's the game. game it's the game let's be real it's <laughs> yeah, just emulating the game and so then how it works it's be like from, six gig of downloads correct so, yeah <laughs> and how all. it works then from that point is that basically uh the disc works like if you've installed it on your 360 or how xbox one discs work you put it in while it's in the, in the drive yeah but it basically just reads off at once and says oh the disc is here and then yeah. it, the disc is a dongle yeah um the the good bit about it is if you um Put it. We, we tried with Cameo, putting in two different copies of Cameo. Yeah. So the download and that install is not tied to that disc. Yeah. Which, so, uh, yeah. So because that was, I know that was one of the rumors that was going around a long time ago about Xbox One. So it's good yeah. to just quash yeah. that and get it's, it out of the way. Right. It's great that didn't go down that path. Um, but it also means 
go and go hit the bargain bins yep. and go through the list of games and grab the ones you've missed. Yep. And um, the other one is digital download. Yeah, well, they're, they're really smooth. The same thing. You have to download it, but obviously it's a yep. digital download. Um, collect all your games off Xbox.com for yep. games for gold, the 360 games as well, because they will show up instantly in your ready to install. So basically you go right to the edge of your the games list that you have installed in your system and it says ready to download. And it's there. Yep. You'll see like, the green side thing saying it's an Xbox 360 game. Fantastic. Like it works real simple, real easy, emulates well. I've not had an emulation problem so far whatsoever. That's no, fantastic. Um, quick, quick note on um, save files. Mm. Now, um, if you have a 360 and you've got saved games you still want to use, yep. um, you've got the cloud storage. And it'll, yeah. Go, go into your storage, upload them to cloud storage, and the Xbox One will then grab Download that save yep. game from your cloud storage. So you'll be able to continue your game as you were playing it on your Xbox 360, which is a really, really nice Really, touch. really cool. Yeah, so basically it's a very well done system. Um, they could definitely take some cues, particularly Nintendo could take some cues on how to do yeah. without having to go into Wii Mote, but let's not go into that in it's any great detail. It just works. It nice. works really, really yeah. well. We'll come back and update the list later on, but um, probably the best value proposition this year as far as I'm concerned. Look, it's just 100 new games just became available. It's great. Now I'm joined by Roland, the game director of Just Cause 3. One of my favourite series, well, I think one of the most underloved games in the world. And you guys still have a very big cult following, but I still think it doesn't get the reputation it deserves. I appreciate that. And hopefully we can hopefully build on that reputation and build it up a little more. So Just Cause 3, uh, and, and the game series has progressively got more bombastic. We remember Just Cause 1, it's like, okay, yeah, cool, it's crazy and things are happening. Just Cause 2 is like, what the hell is going on? I'm, I'm in a helicopter and now I've got a, a statue attached and I'm hitting whatever, you know. <laughs> How do you top that on 3? Uh, with a really talented team and laugh a lot at work. Oh, you would have to, I imagine. You do. I mean... Uh, there's something that's kind of magical when you're laughing and having a good time. I think it comes through in a game. And now that we're finally letting people get their hands on it, and you know you have a game that's going in the right direction when someone has three tethers on helicopters and they're pinwheeling in the sky and they're hanging upside down firing an RPG and they're laughing out loud and they're yep. going on their shoulder like, do you see what I'm doing? Then you're like, yeah, okay, we're in the right direction. Just go bigger now. We've got the, we've got the general <laughs> gist of it. Yeah, yeah, we figured it out. Because, I, and I think that is the uh, the 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 thing in the game had. It had the the B the the B story. You know what I mean? Like the, the kind of the, the B action movie story. Oh, yeah. It had all that. Is that an aesthetic you guys have tried to carry on? Or have you tried to go? You know what? Let's just go as big and, and over the top as we can. So when we started development, the primary thing that we were going to do is gameplay and the sandbox. Yeah. It is about building systems and get out of the way of the player. Yeah. Let them do whatever they want, this is their world. Now, we did do a story, and Rico has a lot of one-liners still, and you know, we, we worked on trying to make some really fun characters, and it should just be an action comedy where we focus on the characters and cutscenes and stuff, yeah. but we basically set up opportunities for you to do whatever the hell you want to do. <laughs> Fair enough. Because I, I think I think maybe that was the enduring charm of the last one. Is it had a little bit of that kind of big trouble in little China almost vibe, you know? Like I, yeah, I can imagine Kurt Russell slotted in there and it'd be just fine. So. <laughs> That's a great reference, actually. Right. That, I love that movie. It was yeah. so much fun. Well, it was, and, and I think I think that what it, that's what works for you guys. Like, was there? I, I guess that's probably one of the last questions I'll ask. Is was there something that you thought? We've got to put this in, and you just couldn't do it, and you wish it could make it in there. Or have you said, nah, screw it, let's just go? I mean, we had a lot of time, and Square's, Square Enix has been a great partner, and it's sort of like, yeah, we want to do this. And they're like, okay, you can do that too. <laughs> and so we started with this huge idea of let's work with Havoc and bring in Havoc Destruction and be able to blow up bridges, and let's take away all the health bars when it comes to you know the fuel tanks and all yep. that and just turn it into actual physics objects so you can rip them apart and attach those to helicopters nice. and drop them on another base and then it's like well we need a bomber jet in there so you can bomb bases and you can go find that in the world and you know physicalize the water so you can jump waves and hey let's control the tension of the grapple wire because that's funny to string someone up and yep try to slingshot them off the top of a church and see how far they go. And each one of those steps made a smile and we pretty much all the things we went after early on, we were like, yeah, that's it. And sometimes there are things that don't work and yeah. those end up getting cut. But our criteria is if it's making us laugh and it is in service to the player, then it's in the game. Fantastic. Roland, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. <laughs>
Anduin. I now believe as you do. That peace is the noblest aspiration. But to preserve it, you must be willing to fight. Wow. Well, what to expect otherwise from Blizzard's own, you know Blizzard have their own cinematic yes. studio, right? They're yes. pretty much the masters of cinematics in video games. You can yeah. always expect something big. Yeah, and in every one of those games they have their cinematics division working on the stuff for Diablo, for the stuff for StarCraft, and the stuff for Warcraft is always awesome, as you can see. But we are both on and off WoW players at the moment. Well, we were definitely both straight in there for Warlords of Draenor yeah. day one. We were in the launch when there's just thousands of people trying to get through these zones. <laughs> and we, we invested, we put the time in after a few months of laboring it out. We yeah. ended up, it probably wasn't really that great Warlords of Draenor. Yeah, uh, all the hype of the release. Uh, I think we finally have settled into the fact that well, the the player base actually shows the tells the story because it went up to over ten million with the release of the new expansion, and now it's down to like three million. It drops straight down. Yeah, and I think there's, there's a few questionable things in Warlords. I personally, uh, garrisons did not play out as yeah. I hoped, and I kind of find it was the anti MMO. Yeah, it's like a mini city where you and only yourself go to do all your own tasks, and it kind of feels like you're separating yourself from the world. And then there was. The dailies upon dailies upon dailies. It was all about dailies, hey. And I found that it became really a job. Yeah. Like, uh, I'd have to come home from work and put all this time. It'd take hours just to get through all my dailies to get progress in the way they've changed things. Yeah, and they've certainly looked at that with previous expansions. Even in Burning Crusade, when they had Chatrath as the capital city, the, the social hub, they thought, oh, this is already cutting up. Uh, already all the Horde and Alliance cities, so they brought it all back to Orgrimmar, and now they've got it as a garrison, and it's just not as like an MMO experience, as you said. So uh, I really have high hopes for Legion. I'll definitely get back into it. Uh, hopefully they fix the issues that Warlords of Draenor had. So Jordan, we are weeks away from the first new Star Wars movie in about a first live action Star Wars movie in a decade. There's a lot of video games, the hype is building. So we're here to talk about the newest Star Wars video game to come out, Star Wars Battlefront. No, not the game from 2004, it's the one released in 2015 for, for World of New Consoles. So yeah, it's the third game in the series now, brought to us this time by EA, it's on PC. And DICE. And DICE. So and now of course, it is literally a Battlefield game. And of course Disney, I guess, as well now. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, alright, so we're looking at Battlefront, it's a first person shooter, it's obviously modelled a lot after, similar to Battlefield, kind yep. of the same engine, kind of the same feel, but now we've got Star Wars, now we've got all the crazy Star Wars vehicles yeah. and weapons and, and stuff. And that's the thing you might be thinking earlier, it's like, hey, this is Star Wars and Battlefield, this is got, got to be like the coolest thing ever, right? And you, and you think that by looking at the game and hearing it because it looks and sounds amazing. Like it is probably the best looking and best sounding game of the year. Which you kind of expect from a Star Wars, yeah. that's kind of the point of Star Wars. I feel the first time I played it, I made sure I turned my speakers right up to get all that sound and it's really a big experience. But then you start playing, you're like, hey, this looks and this plays Battlefield, this looks like Battlefield, it plays fine. But then you find it's very, I don't want to say casual because that sounds horrible, but very streamlined, very straightforward. It's very just kind of cut down for the, for the mainstream audience. So there's not, again, there's no classes, there's not a lot of modes, there's not a lot of maps. There's a, there's a big emphasis on a power-up system, which is kind of weird, but it plays fine enough. I kind of like the power-up system. It's different to Battlefield. In Battlefield, they had a problem where everybody would just camp the same spot. Where, like People who would only want tanks or planes would just sit there until a tank or plane spawned. Now it's random pickups out in the field, so you just right. be running around and you'll see a pickup. And I do enjoy the fact that the pickups are crazy overpowered in a multiplayer game. Like the first mm. time I got in an AT-AT, -AT, like you're literally driving in an AT-AT -AT on the battlefield and just mowing down people left, right and center. Just like the battle of Hoth? Yeah, so it feels great. It gives you that, you definitely get a lot of that big battlefield experience. The moments you see in the trailers, they do happen. Yeah. When you're running across the field, there's TIE fighters exploding above you. There is Luke shit and Darth Vader yeah. There's having shit a going fight. on constantly and it's yeah. great. But then the problem is you play it for a few hours and like you kind of see everything because there's, again, not a lot of modes. Not all our maps. There's no single player, which isn't really a big problem for us because let's face it, it's a multi. This is dice. It's a multiplayer game. You're not gonna play this as a single player. Come on. Otherwise, yeah, it's just it feels weird that like you just get through everything really quickly. And I, 
I, I don't know about you, but the question I have going kind of coming out of this is like, what is this game in a month? Or two months. I'll tell you what it is in a month. It is a lot of DLC in Season Pass, as we've seen before in a lot of games coming out from mm. EA. And the game, some people describe it as shallow. Like, there are actually nine game modes, but a bunch of them, like there's a handful of COD ripoffs. You got Capture the Flag, you got Domination or whatever. There's a few modes that are just useless. They're terribly designed. I don't know why you like, but I won't even get into that now. It's an inter interesting situation, but it's find it a bit devious how much they put season passes at the forefront of the game. Yeah. Like it's literally one of the main options in the menu. There's multiplayer, single player, season pass. It's right in your right. face and it's quite expensive as I well. I guess right now it's fine. Like if you, well, let's put it this way. If you're even thinking about getting to this game and getting on some matches, my recommendation is to get on this game now because who knows what it's going to be like in a month or two. I, it's fine, it plays fine, but if you're interested, Maybe now's the best time to get it before the, before the community dies out. Now, I was super excited for Battlefront until I played the beta. And what it ended up feeling like was just Battlefield 4 with a, like, Star Wars skin. And it's just, they've catered towards, a, like, a more casual game so they can attract all the Star Wars fans that the upcoming movie is going to bring, so, yeah. Yeah, well, like, we're all excited for the movie. I wouldn't be too harsh on it yet, because it's one of those games these days that has to evolve a lot. There'll be a lot of DLC. I think there's a bunch of free expansions. I know we were a bit harsh on their season pass, but I know they're bringing out a lot of free content as well. There's going to be content based on the movie and a few new maps, heroes, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it could pad out to be something a bit better. Yeah, there, there is still, like, a few niggling issues. Like, you mentioned, uh, I think, with the blasters as well. That's right. The blasters, like, the, all the weapons in the game are kind of the same. Like, every gun's a blaster. They all go pew-pew with the yeah. same sound. It's just the, the stats that change a little bit, the rate of fire, the damage or whatever. But it kind of feels, you know, it's not too diverse. It could use a bit of a class-based system, as yeah. Jamie mentioned. Yeah, it certainly could. Uh, hopefully, it will improve in the future and certainly bring more people into the Battlefront games, uh, but we'll always have fond memories of the Battlefront 1 and 2 on the older consoles, but uh, that's it for this week. Next week, look forward to the new Transformers game, which we'll be reviewing. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to that review. I've seen a lot of information on that on the internet. It's from Platinum Games, so we expect Platinum Games, they're usually at the top of the field, they shine yeah. in excellence, but I think this is from the same department that brought Korra. And um, they're bringing this one around. I've seen a few polarizing, some gifts, some questionable yeah. stuff on the internet. And they're not sure how it's going to turn out. So I'm really excited to see what that it, ends it, up like. If it was done by the same like group of people that did Korra, I'm actually really looking forward to it then. Because not only did that have a great animation style, like it was a solid game. It was a solid budget game as well. So hopefully the same will happen for Transformers. But... That's it for this week. So visit our website, www.newgameplus.tv. Check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash newgameplustv. Follow our Twitter and Instagram at newgameplustv. Of course, we've got the Facebook, facebook.com slash newgameplustv. And check out ngpmerch.com and support the show. So that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys next week.